there is a plethora of different healthcare options that you can go to get some experience. What's up you guys, it's Adana. I am back with another video for you guys. So you guys have seen some of my videos talking about being a PA, you've seen other people's videos, you have done your research, you've heard this PA profession just kind of floating around and you're like, what's the hype? And then you're like, oh, that's the hype. I now want to become a PA. So now what? All right. So apart from just like your general prerequisite stuff, there are three things that I do believe that you should absolutely do if you want to be a PA. So the first thing is fill out your CASPA application. What is CASPA? CASPA is our central application website where you would go to put in all of your information, where it's housed so that you can at the click of a button, just go ahead and send it off to the different schools that you're trying to apply to. If you want to be a PA, if you want to apply to PA school, you have to fill out a CASPA application. That is where all, all applications pretty much go through. The website is caspa.liaison.com, but I will be sure to leave a link for it, um, just that specific website for you guys to just click on it and go to that website. If you don't already have a cap a CASPA application, then you should definitely fill one out or create a new application. So that is like my like first thing, biggest thing, start putting in that information because it does take a little time. It is a little time consuming, but the beauty of it is that once it's in there, um, God forbid if you do not get in next cycle um, or this cycle, you it just kind of populates for the next cycle. So it will be able to just transfer over the major information and you would just have to get all of the new like transcripts and stuff sent in again. All right, so what is the number two thing that you need to do, right? I've gone to Art's website. If you haven't seen my video about accreditation, go ahead and check that out. I will leave a link for that in the description box and probably some here, somewhere here on the screen for you guys um, to go check that um, out about provisional or um, developing programs. But ARC is the our accreditation body that talks about keeping the standards for the PA schools set and in place. So they'll be like, oh, okay, you know what? Yeah, you're you're a pretty good PA school. You're doing well. You're you're good. You're like your your accreditation is good. You're gonna continue your accreditation. Or mm, you're you're not doing too well. So you're on probation or hey, you're a freshman, you know, you're kind of new in this. So here you get provisional status, right? Um, and ARC also, in keeping with this standard, has stated that in the year, by the year 2020, all PA schools are expected to go ahead and transition to a graduate degree. So what does that mean? More than likely, you're gonna have to complete your GRE for all PA schools by the year 2020 definitely by 2021 because it is stated that if you do not come if they're not transitioned if those schools don't transition to a graduate degree program by the year 2021 then their accreditation can be pulled and you don't want to be at a school where their accreditation is pulled because you have to actually graduate from an accredited PA school to sit for your certification exam which is the pants exam so that is definitely one thing that I suggest all of you do. If you want to go to PA school, take your GRE. It's not the subject-based GRE, um, it's a general GRE. So make sure that you're choosing the right test when you're actually applying to take the GRE, um, which is something that you'll have to do to sit for the test. And the third thing that you need to do is get healthcare experience, right? So there is a plethora of different healthcare options that you can go to get some experience. There's home health aid, H, um, which is the HHA, CNA, MA. You can be an EMT, a paramedic. You can be a scribe, but be just be cautious because not every school accepts scribe hours because they don't actually touch the patient. But there are some schools who do. So if you want to be a scribe just in your early years of patient care and healthcare experience, that is okay as well. But there are many options out there. So do your research, find out what works best for you, and then go ahead and get that healthcare experience. Um, schools look really highly upon that. So if you get like a good 500, I think that's a good solid amount of hours, but um, anything a thousand and over, you are golden, okay? Um, so what are my three things? Definitely 
fill out a CASPA application or create one if you haven't already done so. Number two is to go ahead and take your GRA because most schools or every school should be transitioning into a graduate level PA program by the year 2021. And then thirdly, go ahead and get your healthcare experience in and shadow some PAs as well while you're at it so that you can actually understand um, the healthcare field and what you will be doing and how to interact with patients and get your hours in for your application in PA school. All right, so I hope this was very helpful to those of you who are considering a career in PA or who want to now become a PA after seeing some of the information out there on the profession. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. And if you have any suggestions for videos that you would like to see next, go ahead and leave those as well. I will be sure to get back to them. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.